It's what I continue to love about the show. It's the complex characterizations, how the best of intentions do not necessarily yield good actions or even good results, how every decision has a major consequence to it. <laughs> Welcome back, House Targaryen fans, and thank you for clicking on my review for episode 6 of House of the Dragon, where every single week we gather right here to discuss all the episodes and all the spoilers, and we're kicking off the back half of the season with a massive 10-year time jump where we need to re-establish the ever-changing landscape of Westeros, get reacquainted with our beloved characters, new actors on the roles, with Emma Darcy as the new Rhaenyra and Olivia Cook as the new Alicent, Viserys looks like absolute shit. <laughs> but the more things change, the more they stay the same, as the conflicts established and catapulted to all-time high levels of tension last week are still brewing. The dynamics are completely different and there's this sense of unpredictability because so much has changed. There's this jarring sense to how much we've jumped ahead in time and so there's this constant sense of danger where Rhaenyra is at the center of the story and there's so many new proverbial daggers pointed at her for so many new sides and even other characters. Some of our main players are very dormant in their conflict in this episode, but it's still one where so much changes in this one hour. It is a perfect companion piece to last week, where everything that was planted last week is now reaping its very bitter rewards. And at the same time, it's a really nice callback to the premiere episode in many ways. A ton of the symbolism from back there is present here. A ton of the themes are prevalent here when it regards to hard choices and consequences. So while I will tell you this is for me easily the weakest episode of the series thus far, just because it's a restarting point for everything, it's a ton of re-establishment, it's a ton of reacquaintance with what we lost along the way, but that being said, this is a series that has been kicking it at a high standard of quality constantly. So even this being the weakest episode, it's like a B plus. This is still a really great episode of television. Again, with tons of great callbacks, tons of great connection to the wider lore of Game of Thrones near the end with the burning of a certain building. But we'll get to that in a bit. Of course, we need to go from character chapter to character chapter. And we need to start with the princess herself, Rhaenyra Targaryen. Brand new mother as this episode opens. And what I like to see is the change in Rhaenyra. Not only the physical change with Emma Darcy now playing the role, in what is an absolutely seamless actor transition. It feels like it's the exact same person playing the role. The same goes for Olivia Cook as Alicent. And yet, so much has internally changed in Rhaenyra. She's grown bitter, cynical, jaded at the world, where now, despite being a mother, despite being the queen in waiting, she really has changed as a person where she treats Sir Lenor the same exact way her father treated her when she was younger. He has the title, he has the position, but he is given no power, no responsibility. He's basically a prisoner in his own marriage, much like Rhaenyra herself has felt for the past 10 years. So while those forced decisions of getting married to one another started from a very pure place where they committed to one another and yet gave enough freedom, they still feel in prison. Throughout this episode, we see Lenor wanting to go out into the sea, be free, but Rhaenyra is holding her ground. She is not willing to let go of her position, of her title, of the throne, not only out of fear that her leaving would reinforce and encourage Alicent and her children's claim to the throne, but also because the father of Rhaenyra's children, Sir Harwin Strong, Guess what? Yeah, it's not Sir Lenor. <laughs> he is also in King's Landing. He is the commander of the City Watch. And so it's not up until the end, after everything that happens with Sir Harwin, that Rhaenyra decides the safest place for us 
is in Dragonstone. So even in this episode where it feels like our main characters are passive, there's still this great change in Rhaenyra where we see her growing rather than thinking, what's the best for me? What do I want? She begins to think what is best for her children. And she does what's best not only for them, but also for Laenor. So even in this episode, she grows massively. Rhaenyra is, however, not the character most drastically changed in this episode. That prize easily goes to Daemon Targaryen, who now is happily married to Lena Valerion and completely disregards his Valyrian heritage. He hasn't been back to Westeros since Rhaenyra's wedding, probably heartbroken that the love of his life was whisked away into the arms of another very dull man, at least according to Daemon. It's a very vulnerable look at Daemon Targaryen, who feels lost like he doesn't belong anywhere. He's basically a bounty hunter willing to work for hire for the Prince of Pentos in his war against Dorne that doesn't serve him in any way besides getting gold out of it, which creates compelling conflict with Lena, who wants to go back to her home instead of being in constant travel, which is such a contrast to their harmonious introduction as they both fly their dragons through the sky and work so well together. And come the end of this episode, we see how it has strained Daemon's relationship with his daughters and how ultimately that costs Lena her life, who wants to die the death of a dragon rider. And when she can't bear their third child, she commits suicide by Dracarys at the hands or at the fire, at the mouth, at the throat, I don't know. Lena dies by the fire of the biggest dragon in all of Westeros, her dragon, Vagar. And we see how much that absolutely crushes Daemon, who now has to raise these children, and he doesn't know how. So in Feeling Lost, my guess is Daemon's going to go back to his origins and reunite with his niece who he hasn't seen in 10 years but even so Damon knows exactly who the father is even though he hasn't been back in Westeros in one knows how long it's such a unique look at Damon, so different from everything we've seen so far where he still exhibits a little bit of his bravado and a little bit of his mystique but through this episode they break down his emotional walls and I feel like we see the real Damon for the first time and so even though he's not like a major player in this episode he has such a key part to play in such an understated way I was really a fan of how they kept him in the background but still kept him important for the overall arcing story of the series the same cannot be said for Alicent Hightower our queen who is equally jaded equally vitriolic at Rhaenyra immediately calling upon her as she has a baby continuously throwing these accusations which granted are very true at Viserys regarding the real heritage of her children and Viserys is completely defeated inside and out physically wasting away while knowing Alicent's accusations in regards to the father of Rhaenyra's children are true but this man has always been ruled by fear in trying to create a prosperous future for his bloodline be it his children and now his grandchildren he's trying to do his best now as a man as a father and prioritizing that position of his above that of being king and it's such a powerful scene where the two argue even when sir lionel approaches him wanting to tell him the truth wanting to strip himself away of the position of hand of the king by the way sir lionel this dude is the mvp i feel so bad for the end of the episode because this dude is the least toxic and most honorable person in the entirety of westeros that has not been corrupted by the world around him, which cannot be said for Queen Alicent, who's become so jaded, so bitter herself. She's become so blinded by rage and wanting to manipulate herself into this position of power, wanting her father back and confessing this to Sir Laris Strong. Our little finger for the series, who has grown so close to the Queen, he is now her secret little council. While Alicent shares the small council with Rhaenyra, and there's so much tension in that one scene where they exchange words and Rhaenyra attempts to make peace, but now Alicent here is playing her chips into the wrong 
person. And it's fascinating how this dude, Larry Strong, in just two episodes, he manages to be the most despicable, hateful character in this entire series. We're in this conversation with the Queen about her wanting her father back into this position of power. He uses that as the poison needed to leverage his position and have the Queen be indebted to him, where we finally see the legendary burning of Harren Hall, with Sir Laris going down to the catacombs, stripping the tongue out of certain prisoners so they cannot talk, and he murders his own father and brother. An absolutely frightening, horrifying scene, but what's even more frightening is the confrontation between Alicent and Sir Laris. He knows exactly how much power he now holds over the Queen, who is indebted to him. And for the first time in this episode, we see Alicent fearful. We see her broken. We see her in absolute despair. A person who throughout this episode has held her ground, has held power over Rhaenyra, even over Viserys, Sir Criston, and holds herself as a person who is trying to do what's best for her family and holds a position of honor and decency as discussed with Sir Criston. The ending of this episode hits an emotionally resonant note where Alicent is confronted with what her desire for power has truly cost her, her integrity, honor, and decency that she so claims to have throughout this episode. She made a deal with the devil, the best of intentions, but the actions were extremely questionable. So now, does she see herself the same as Rhaenyra? The same as Daemon? It's what I continue to love about the show. It's the complex characterizations, how the best of intentions do not necessarily yield good actions or even good results. How every decision has a major consequence to it and major stakes that constantly shift the dynamic where one character is trying to do what's best for their family, the other is in this manipulative power play as they vie for a higher position of, pow of power and are looking out for themselves. This is the cream of the crop when it comes to House of the Dragon and what has made it such a spectacular show thus far. Now, I said that this was easily my weakest episode of the series thus far, and that's just because we're starting back up again. We're re-establishing everything that is going to come into play and that is going to be paid off on the back half of the season. This episode was once again a lot of setup, and that's why I feel it is such a great companion piece to episode 5. As much as I'm loving week to week watches on this series, I feel like episode 5 and episode 6 should be watched together. These are two episodes that should be binged because last week feels cathartic. It feels like a payoff of everything. And this week, we're still setting up how that reestablishment of stakes and of conflict and of character dynamics is now going to come into play on the back half of the series. So it's not a bad episode at all. It's just that this show has been delivering banger after banger after banger after banger after banger. And this is just the least loud of the bangers that House of the Dragon has delivered. Quick, before I let you know my final thoughts on House of the Dragon episode 6, I need you to start the conversation about it in the comments below. Are you adjusting well to the time jump? Are you liking the new actors in the roles that we already know and love? Anything and everything down there. And if you are enjoying the weekly House of the Dragon reviews, if you're enjoying this House of the Dragon review, or if you just love movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations in your favorite movies and TV. It makes things so exciting for the back half of the series, it wouldn't feel earned or true to who these characters are and the themes that the story is tackling whatsoever if we didn't have that slow burn first half, where it still feels like a small-scale, intimate story of a family protecting itself from the poison within, but now we see the poison from the outside corrupting it, and corrupting it from all sides, where this family is self-destroying itself, again, bringing the prophecy to fulfillment. So I cannot wait to see what they do next, and how Daemon 
is being brought back into the fold to stand side by side with Rhaenyra because my friends, these are the Targaryens, so incest is Wincest. But those are just my thoughts on House of Dragon Episode 6. Let me know what you make of it in the comments below and how do you rank the episodes thus far. We'll be back to talk Episode 7 next week, so I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching and big thanks to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And until the next one, love each other and love the movies.